Well, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to our last trig topic. That's right. Our last topic is all on solving trig equations. So we're going to start very basic and we'll build our way up through the week. Um, today is called first degree trig equations. These will be by far the easiest equations. Okay, first degree is going to have an exponent of 1. For example, if I said 4x plus 2 equals 8, this is a first deg degree equation because my exponent on my x is a 1. If I said 4x squared minus 16 equals 0, this is a second degree equation because my highest exponent is a 2. If I said 4x cubed plus 16 equals 0, this obviously would be a third degree. But like I said, today we're only solving first degree equations, so it's fairly nice. Alright, so let's start with some basic trig equations. So if I were to ask you the, to solve the function 2x minus 1 equals 0, now clearly this is not a trig equation because you don't see sine, cosine, tangent, etc. But the idea is still the same. What would you do to solve for x? Well, I think you would add 1 to both sides. So we'd get 2x equals 1, and then we divide both sides by 2. So I would say x equals 1 half. Well, basically, when we solve a trig equation, we're doing the exact same thing. Our goal is to get the trig equation by itself. So instead of saying 2x minus 1, let's say 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so the only thing I changed from the previous example to this example is instead of just seeing x, we see sine x. We have a trig equation. So we're going to solve it the exact same way. Again, I would add 1 to both sides. I've got 2 sine x equals 1. Divide both sides by 2. So the only difference you're seeing is not x equals 1 half, but you're seeing the sine of x equals 1 half. Now, at this point, we're halfway there. I want you to think about your sine graph real quickly. So let's go ahead and sketch it out. I know I've got my four points here and it starts at 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0 and it looks like this. And basically the question saying is when is the sine curve equal to a half? Well keep in mind that has a max of 1. So I would say a half is about here. And if you take a look, oops I should draw a straighter line in, I would definitely say you get two answers when sine is equal to one half. And here's how we're going to think about it. Once we get to this point, I want you to ask yourself, what quadrants is your answer sitting in? Okay, and that comes back to our nice little saying, all students tip cows. Notice I have a positive one half. So let's just make a note there. This is positive. Where can you be if you're sine and you're positive? Well, clearly, these represent the positive trig quadrants, so sine could be here because they're all positive and sine could be here because that's where it is positive. Let's kill those two out. So basically I should have an answer in quadrant one and an answer in quadrant two. My next step is to state my reference angle. So basically you're saying what is this angle x here that my answer is one half? So think about the values you know. Is it 30, 60, 45? Hopefully you're saying the sine of 30 is one half. So 30 is my reference angle and in quadrant one, it already falls in there. There's my 30 degree angle, so that's my answer in quadrant one. Now in quadrant two, I've got to put my 30 degree angle in. How big is the actual angle though? How did we figure that out before? Well remember, that's just 180 minus 30. So I would say 150 degrees. Now, depending on the way the question's worded, we might be done, we might not be. If they want the answer in degrees, I would just put my answer in notation, bracket notation, and say I've got 30 degrees and 150 degrees. When if they want my answer in radians? All right, so let's switch gears. Well, what is 30 degrees in radians? Hopefully you recall by now that that's pi over 6. Now, 150 degrees, you can do it the long way if you want, which is to take your 150 and multiply by pi over 180, but we're hoping that you can catch on a little quicker. Basically, we already know 30 goes into 150. How many times? 30 times what gets you 150? Hopefully you're saying 30 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So I'm going to say that's 5 30s or 5 pi over 6. 
And does that make sense? 30 is pi over 6. 5 times 30 makes 150. Well, we've done it. We've solved our first trig equation. Let's try another. Equation 2. Sine x plus radical 2 equals negative sine x. Okay, now remember, let me just, you know, explain that this is a very simple equation. It's like saying x plus radical 2 equals negative x. How would you solve that simple equation? Well, you'd put your x's on one side, everybody else on the other. So I would probably add x, add x, subtract the radical 2, etc. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm actually going to add my sine x to both sides. So I've got 2 sine x plus radical 2, and if I added that over, I'm left with 0. And then I would probably move my radical 2 to the other side, so equals negative radical 2. And to get this sine x by itself, I would divide both sides by 2. So I've got the sine of x equals negative radical 2 over 2. Okay, halfway there. Haven't actually solved for x yet. So let's get our reference angle and then we'll talk quadrants. What are you thinking x is if the sine of x is radical 2 over 2? It's a value you should know. 30, 60, or 45. Hopefully you're saying 45 degrees. Okay, now let's talk quadrants. Looking at this, what type of number do you want? Okay, positive or negative? Clearly it's negative. So I make my quick chart, all students tip cows, sine and negative. So I can kill quadrant 1 and I can kill quadrant 2. So I know my answers have to be in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. Okay, so just picture your angle in quadrant 3. If that's 45, how big is the whole angle? So I would say that's 180 plus 45 gets me 225. And quadrant 4, if I draw in my 45 degrees, Remember, I want the whole angle, so it looks like that's 360 minus 45, so that should be old school, finding the reference angle. And I've got 315. Now, again, it'll tell you how it wants its answer, and if you look back at the top here, the answer said between 0 and 2 pi. So just ask yourself, are they asking for degrees or are they asking for radians? Well, pi is a radian, so I'm just going to convert my answers to radians now. Again, you could take your 225 and multiply by pi over 180, etc., and simplify. Or you can just ask yourself, how many 45s are in 225? Okay, and I would say 5 of them. So 5 and 45 is pi over 4. How many 45s are in 315? I would say 7 and 45, so that's 7 pi over 4. And there you go. If you can't do that in your head, go the old school way and simplify it. Okay, my goal is to get tan x by itself. And again, if this really freaks you out, just think to yourself, it's really 2x plus 2 radical 3, and you're equal 0, and your goal is to get x by itself. What would you do? Well, I would subtract the 2 radical 3, and then I would divide both sides by 2. So I basically get x equals negative radical 3. Now just remember, it's not really x, it's tan x. So I'm saying tangent of x equals negative radical 3. Now again, if you can solve for tangent of x, I don't think you need to do this. I'm just trying to break it down for anybody that's stuck. All right, halfway there, once you've got tan x, we need a reference angle. Okay. Your function is tangent, your answer is negative radical 3. Forget the negative, just radical 3. Are you 30, 60, or 45? Hopefully you're saying tangent of 30 has all the 3's, this is just 60 degrees. Now, we've got to talk quadrants. Alright, so we've got tangent and we've got negative. So quick, all students tip cows. Okay, tangent's positive where they're all positive and in the tangent quadrant. It says we need a negative one, so I've got to be in quadrants 2 and 4. All right, my reference angle is 60. I'm going to draw it in second quadrant. That's 60. That means my whole angle is 180 minus 60, or 120. And in quadrant 4, bow tie triangle, I've got my 60. That means my whole angle is 360 minus 60, which is, whoops not 60, 300. 
And how did we want those? In degrees or radians? Well, oh, shucks, I didn't say. Let's convert them to degrees. I'm sorry, to radians. All right, so just ask yourself. Clearly the reference angle is 60. How many times does it go into 120? 2 times 60 is 120. And the reference angle for 60 is pi over 3. So one answer is 2 pi over 3. How many times does 60 go into 300? Well, 6 times 5 is 30, and the 60 makes it pi over 3. Again, if you can't do it in your head, you are taking 120, converting to radians by multiplying by pi over 180, and you'll get the same thing. All right, next example. 2 sine x plus 3 equals 1. All right, so my goal is just to get sine x by itself. See if you can do that on your own. Pause it, give it a whirl. So I've got 2 sine x equals negative 2, divide by 2, obviously I subtracted that 3 first, uh, I've got sine x equals negative 1. Now, this one's a little sneakier, okay, anytime you have, so let's make a note here, anytime you have 0, 1, or negative 1, okay, you're not picturing the chart, you're picturing the graph, okay, anytime you get a 0, 1, or negative 1, you're picturing the graph. So I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to say, let's draw the sine curve out. So I've got my pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. I know sine starts at 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. I don't even need to connect it, but I will. I know it looks like that. So my question is, how many times does the sine graph equal negative 1? How many times did you hit negative 1? I would say just once, and that answer is at... 3 pi over 2. So in fact, that's my only answer. It only hit once, so my only answer is 3 pi over 2. And again, if I wanted degrees, pi over 2 is 90 times 3. Its equivalent would be 270 degrees. All right, now this next one's just a little different. Notice the directions. It says solve for x to the nearest degree. Let's just highlight that nearest degree. What does that imply? Well, Clearly, they want you to round your answer, so it's not going to be something familiar. This is not going to be a 30, 60, or 45 reference angle. What it's implying when it says nearest something is that you're going to need your calculator. All right, so don't try to do it in your head. It's not going to be possible for you. If you don't have your calculator, go grab it so we can practice together here. All right. So let's just use some common sense. Before I, you know, I want to begin this problem, I would say to myself, all right, this 3 is in front of these parentheses. So what would that tell you to do? Well, just take that 3 and distribute. So I would say I've got 3 cos x minus 3 equals negative 5 minus 4 cos x. Okay, and just like a simple algebra problem, I want to put the like terms on one side, so I want to put my cosines on the same side, and I want to put just my constants on one side. So I'm going to add 4 cos x to both sides. So I've got 7 cos x minus 3 equals negative 5, and then I want to add this 3 over. I want my constants on one side. So 7 cos x, that gives me a negative 2. All right, now my goal, remember, is to get cos x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So I've got cos x equals negative 2 sevenths. All right, so we've got one pretty important deal here. I just want to stress, okay, that this negative, I just want to stress, tells you the quadrant. And let's get that in our notebook. This negative tells you the quadrant you're going to be sitting in. So I've got my all students tip cows, and I know I'm cosine and I'm negative. Well, remember, this is where they're positive, so I know cosine's negative, so it can't be in the all and it can't be in the cosine. That means my answers have to fall in quadrants 2 and 3. Now, just like we've done in previous problems, to solve for this x here, I'm going to have to take the cosine inverse of both sides. Now, here's the most important part. I want this start in your notebook. All right, this is going to be the part you forget. It's going to be the part we talk about every day. You are not typing in the negative sign. Okay, so I should probably say do not type in the negative sign. 
Okay, the negative told you the quadrant. So you're just hitting inverse cosine of two sevenths. All right, so again, why are we doing that? The negative tells you the quadrants. That's it. That's all it is. All right, and of course I want to be um, in degree mode. So my reference angle, I am getting a positive 73.398, etc. Okay, so how do I get my reference angle? Well, now notice, I'm not going to round this answer because this is not my final answer. All right, so I say to myself, if I'm in quadrant 2, uh, my reference angle is 73, so how big is my whole angle? And I've stored this into alpha A, so I'm going to say in quadrant 2, that's 180 minus alpha A. And this is the answer that I want to round. I get 106.6, which is going to round to 107 degrees. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the same thing in quadrant 3. I've got my reference angle. I need this whole angle. So this time that's 180 plus what I stored in alpha A. And this is the answer I'm rounding. So I've got 253.3, which of course is 253 degrees. All right, so that was a big one for us. A couple things I just want to stress. You do not type the negative in. The negative tells you the quadrants, okay? And the other big thing is we don't round our reference angle. We're only going to round our final answers. All right, that was a big one. Let's give another one a whirl. All right, well, believe it or not, this is the last one I have for you tonight. So let's say our answer is going to fall between 0 and 2 pi. So again, this is just telling me put my final answer in radians. So go ahead, pause it, try it on your own. Just solve for cosine x. I've got cosine x equals 1. I did it all in my head. I subtracted the 4 over. I've got 2. I divided both sides by 2. And I get cos x equals 1. Again, you're halfway home there. All right. Now, is 1 on the graph or is it on the table you've memorized? Hopefully by now you know, we said it before, that if your answer is 1, 0, and negative 1, you should be looking at the graph. Okay, so I'm going to graph cosine real quickly. Get my four tick marks on there. Okay, and cosine starts at 1, it hits 0, negative 1, 0, 1. So the question is, how many times is cosine equal to 1? Well, look at your picture. How many times do you have an answer of 1? Well, if I draw in the line 1, I would say it hits there once. And if I keep going, it hits there once. I would say there's two answers. That is when x equals 0 and x equals 2 pi. Now, I just want to make sure that falls within my interval, and it does. So my two answers are 0 and 2 pi. So couple things to keep straight. Notice, when it was on the graph, I didn't need a reference angle because I was just looking at this. But if it's not on the graph, I definitely need my reference angle and quadrants. So there you have it. If you got stuck on anything, rewind it, replay it, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.